Hi, unfortunately it's me again and we are back with another retro shader. This one is called the Bit Death Shader and it aims to recreate this cool Bit Death look that you can see here. We're gonna build this shader from scratch, however if you do not have the time or do not want to, you can also purchase the shader on my Patreon for like 4 bucks. We're gonna implement a lot of control, including the pixelation of the image, the color depth of the image, the white value and the midtones or how black the image is going to be. So without further ado, we are going to rebuild this shader. Link to my Patreon if you want to purchase the shader is in the description as always. And also as always, we are going through this shader for every, everyone who knows what he's doing. Uh, here's a quick rundown. So we are going to pixelate our input, obviously with the multiply pixelation, post process input. We are separating the brightness value from the image. We're gonna, we're going to do some fancy maths saying, all right, above a certain threshold of light value, we're going to display, for instance, a white. Everything below this white value, but above our selected value should be displaying this white with a dot. Everything below this value, but lighter than this value right here should display our 60% and so on and so forth. We're going back down, back down, back down. Then we're going to lerp it into our original color output. That is again, the lightness value. We're going to restrict the color depth and put this one in to our lerp. And then we're going to recolor it. So we give it this nice Nokia calculator color effect and then we output it. So now that we went through the basics, we are going to recreate this shader from scratch. Get a new material. This material is called bitmap tutorial. Bitmap tutorial. Perfect. And we're going to open it, dragging it over here so we can see it. Our material is not a surface material, it is a post-process material. And again, we're going to start with scene texture, but not with the scene color, but with the post-process input zero, and we're putting it into emissive. This is what our camera sees. Now we're going to get the texture coordinates. Additionally, we can also get something called screen position. I think I'm gonna use screen position. There's not a lot of difference between them. We're going to use the viewport UV and we're going to multiply it, multiply. Then we're rounding down floor and dividing this image by the same value. So we're multiplying, we're going to round it down so that we have a difference and then we're dividing by the same value. So if we would just multiply it and divide it, there would be no difference if we right click parameter and multiplying and dividing it for the same value, you know, doesn't make any sense. But with this one, we get a bit of a difference and this difference is what makes it pixelated. So this parameter we're calling pixelation, pixelation. And I set the maximum to 250 and the minimum to 50. You don't have to set any uh, restrictions. I usually do. And now we can put this one into our UV and you have your pixelation shader. Drag it around the less the less value, the more pixelated, the higher value, the less pixelated it looks. Congratulations, you got your first pixelation shader. I have mentioned before that we need the light value. So usually we would use the HSL color scheme, but this is not possible in an easy way in Unreal right now. So we're going to use the HSV because this has its own node. RGB to HSV. So HSV is hue saturation value and the value is a zero to one value, which describes the lightness of something. So a white is a one and a black or dark is a zero. But if we put it into emissive color right now, you can see, well, well, it doesn't look like much. Where is the black and white that I promised? We're going to make a float debug, not debug, break out float three components. So we're breaking HSV into RGB. So. The B is our V value, our, our value value, if you want to say it like that. B, putting it into emissive call, and you see that we got a perfect black and white image. The blacks are black and the white is white. And we're going to use this a lot now. For the bitmap, bitmap effect, I prepared a couple of images. The reason why I'm using this black to white color scheme is that we want to use it as a 
mask. You can create those images and they're really not special, right? So those images are just a uh, hundred by a hundred images uh, that are white and I created it in Adobe Illustrator, but you can use Photoshop or uh, Microsoft Paint or, or whatever. We're just gonna drag it all in here. Now we have dragged all of our texture images in here. And for each of every pixel, we want one of these symbols to appear, which means we have to multiply the UVs by the times we multiplied our image. Now we are going, now we're coming to the more tricky part. We're going to do some fancy math. So let's put an if condition in there. We have a couple of values. A is our reference image and we want our reference image to be the black and white image from down here, A. Now we have our reference value and we can set that to whatever we want, a uh, scalar parameter. This is our white threshold, white threshold. Again, I'm going to set some parameters. I'll say max is 0 0.95 and minimum is 0 0.8 and per default it's 0 0.9. It's just what to do. And we're gonna put that into B. So what it does is it compares A, every pixel of A against B and says, if the pixel in A is brighter than the value of 0 0.9, which is a very light gray, white is one, black is zero. Then we're gonna output this. If it is exactly the same height or the same not the same height but the same white value than 0 0.9 then we're gonna do something if it is darker then we're also going to do something the first one is a bit tricky because in the first one we're gonna add our white image all the way now we're gonna copy it perfect again we want in a our reference image which is this one right here this one comes in here and our value to compare against let's say is this value up here subtracted by 0 0.1 which will in this case always be 0 0.1 below what we set in this case it is 0 0.8 again we are comparing this image to 0 0.8 so every pixel that is brighter than 0 0.8 should do what display this one up here everything that is the same brightness should also display this up here everything that is darker please display our white with a cross uh, white with a dot in it if that makes sense and we're going to do the same again so here and here and the same minus one again and our reference image is b also, so now we're at 0 0.7 everything that is brighter than 0 0.7 please display this one comes out here if it is darker than 0 0.7 please display this one and now we're going to do this all the way down for each and every of these images. I just copy and pasted it and this one now I'm going to call the midtones so that we have some sort of separation. And the midtones should range from 0 0.6 to about 0. Uh, 0 0.3 I suppose. That's just made up value. 0 0.5 are all midtones. And for the black, what we're gonna do for the black is we again set our own threshold and say promote the parameter. This parameter is called the black level and it is between let's say 0 0.2 and 0 and right now it is 0 0.1 as a default value and if it's black please just display black. So what do we have if we display this one right here? This is what our image looks like. It is cool looking, but we're using it as a mask. So everything that is a black value will be multiplied with this white value and so on and so forth. So we're going to use this black and white image as a mask. So we're going to linear interpolate it. And in alpha, we're going to put this one right here. And in here, our light value goes into the B. Now we have somewhat our color back in the image. To restrict the bit depth of our color, we're going to do the same thing as with our pixelation right here. So we're gonna just sort of do the same thing. We're multiplying and dividing it. However, we're going to multiply 
Now we're gonna round up ceiling and then we're gonna floor, we're gonna divide it again. There you go, by the same amount. Promote the parameter, which we now call um, color depth. And let's say um, a max of 64 and a min of eight and the default by 16. We're gonna put it into divide as well and connecting it into the B, which means we now have uh, a 16 bit color image. Of course, we want it to be a bit more colorful than that. Also, if you already want to play around with the values, you can to make it a bit more beautiful if you want to. Sort of like this, why not? It is a bit too dark for my taste, so I'm gonna say zero point, uh, subtract this one subtract and uh, put this into B and 0 0.5 okay so we can delete this one and play with the midtones we can make them a bit darker and the highlights a bit lighter playing around with the color this looks like what I want to go for so I'm subtracting 0.3 and not 0.1 as I did before. And this looks sort of okay to me. Now we wanna colorize all of this. We're gonna linear interpolate it again, putting this into the alpha. So again, what this does, we can see it right here is that this is a black and white mask. So everything that is black will be on the AI input. Everything that is white will display the B input in a, in a whole image. So this black part down here will be the color of whatever we put into A and this white part up here will be the color of whatever we put into B. So we're gonna press three and left click on our keyboard. And just for demonstration purposes, let's make it a, a, a blue, <laughs> put it into A, emissive color, there you go. And three, left click, put it into B. And this is going to be uh, yellowish. And this is the color that we're going for here. So we can just adjust these colors if we want to. I got some colors on my second screen open that uh, we can put into 0 0.089. I'm just gonna copy everything that is there, 0, 0 and a 0 0.118. Ah, oh, this already looks great. And this one right here is a 0 0.7. I'm really, I'm really liking this color, by the way. You know what, I'm gonna leave it. Ah, oh, uh, dang it, it already changed it. 0 0.8, uh, I, loved, I love this style, 0 0.9. Ooh, 0. 0. 0.85, come on. Both, best of both worlds, alrighty. Now we're gonna deploy it in our scene. Under place actors, let's go for post, cross this volume, place it in here. So you can see it, then we're gonna look for unbound, infinite extent, perfect. Then we're gonna look for post, post process, perfect. Post process material plus asset reference. So navigate to your, uh, to your shader, to your material, bitmap tutorial, right click, create material instance, and now drag and drop this material instance in here. And now you can see that it is affecting the whole world. And since we made it an instance, double click on it, it makes, it opens this instance right here. And now you can adjust all of this white values right here. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that I could nudge you into the right direction and that I could help you save some time if you did not find the time to watch this video or did not get along. Again, you can just buy this from a Patreon for about four bucks or something or check out my website. Leave a comment down below on what I should cover next or any tips from your side. You, know, you just say hello. I always appreciate someone saying hello. I'm probably going to read the comments. There aren't that many. Tell me what you want to hear next and I'll probably cover this topic. Thank you for your attention and goodbye.